It's the after bedtime glow, glow up, glam up in my, um, my robe. I got this postpartum with cord and I had a, um, she had a matching like newborn pajamas, which I was so sad when she grew out of. And I took lots of mamarazzi photos in those. And, um, then she had like a cute little dress and bloomer that I think are like three to six months. And I still squeeze her into it like a shirt and bloomers, but anyways, hibiscus honey. And I love it from Coco Moon and other Hawaiian mama, an entrepreneur who has changed like many lives with her, um, you know, following her passion. And there's nothing I love more than getting behind women and their passions and being inspired by women, embracing their ideas and the, the ways they're meant to use their gifts. And it's just such a blessing to be in that space myself. Um, today I had a proud, proud mama moment that one of those things, I mean, there's so many things I never want to forget, but this is definitely one of them. I, and as like a little bit of a backstory for myself and context, which is funny to say myself, because I know this, but, um, I have always loved trees, loved them. I have this thing with weeping willow trees. I did not grow up with weeping willow trees there. I grew up in Florida and that's just not a tree that Florida has. I do love our cypress trees by the lake where I grew up and how there was beautiful hanging Spanish moss from the cypress trees right at the edge of the lake. Um, and the cypress knobby knees that you had to watch out for all over the grass. I love, I love that. I love the oak trees, the beautiful oak trees on these brick lined streets in my hometown of winter park, Florida, and how the moss would hang from there does hang from there. I love palm trees, all the different varieties of palm trees, especially traveler palm trees. I always mar marvel to how they fanned out. Um, and, but weeping willow trees have always been this like fast. I've always had a fascination with it and had a secret, um, fort idea that I want to just be in there and read books and just be next to a beautiful stream. And that is my, um, kind of mental like heaven. When I picture like this serene place where I feel safe and held and inspired, it's like next to this stream with a beautiful weeping willow tree with her, you know, branches hanging down and like inviting me into this like room inside, you know, protected little room where the sunlight can stream in. I went to a wedding last August, um, in Chelan, Washington, like at a vineyard there. It's a family wedding and, um, like woo -woo, Janessa and Zach. Um, but it was so beautiful because there were weeping willow trees right by the ceremony down by the bank over the river. And I loved it. Um, and I think what, what I love the most about the movie Avatar is Mother Awa and the tree and all these little wisps that she, um, gives off in the way that she's connected to the people around her, right? Like they, they, they plug in like to her wisdom and to her life force with their, um, hair and I, and like how they sway around with her and they're just that, that rhythm, that synchronicity, that harmony, that alignment. Um, and even in the Lord of the Rings, what I like the most about that movie is Rivendell. And I think that's what's called where the elves live because of the magical trees there. And just like the, the trees and the juxtaposition with the waterfalls done. Um, growing up, one of my favorite movies was Fern Gully. And I was just very deeply disturbed with the rainforest and the tearing down, like the plot of it. Um, this beautiful utopia with the fairies and, and the jungle, the rainforest and the beautiful trees and how, um, I probably will go back and watch that movie, but I just remember how that was, um, that balance was upset and the trees were taken down. And then, um, I also loved and still love as probably my favorite book, the Lorax and that story of letting it grow and that we all need um, to feed trees, um, fresh water and clean air and, and soil. And, um, that that is what powers us. And when we get too far away from, from trees and their beauty and what they give us and what, um, then our priorities are not in alignment. Um, and I think I've done a podcast in the past about a book I read, I'll have to re, re, re um, visit that for the title, but it was about a beautiful, um, a story about, which is based in fact, 
about a um, town in India that had become very arid and desolate because of destruction of trees. And um, this father, in an effort to revitalize the love around having daughters, um, which had been a source of strain, I'll say like socioeconomically for these families when they had a daughter um, in the past. So he started planting trees, like several trees or something for every daughter that was born. And then those daughters would care for, um, so the daughters in the village would then care for the trees that were planted in their honor. And over time, this desolate space grew into back into a forest and it um, was revitalized and the land was re-energized and the like now there's purpose and there's power in these trees and in these women. And it's, it was just beautiful. I cried. It was a children's book and I uh, uh, like, it was just so beautiful. Um, and trees for me, our neighborhood has beautiful mango trees and there's these massive, um, I think they're monkey pot trees in the middle of our like community grass space. And I, several years ago, maybe two years ago, <clears throat> the HOA decided like one of the trees was diseased and needed to come down this massive tree. Um, and I literally wrote for like the HOA newsletter, a poem, like giving gratitude to the tree. <laughs> and I feel like I am like a mama Lorax for these trees. And while I understand that tree trimming, that's a big business in Florida, of, of course, post hurricanes. So that's something that, um, and there's lots of traumatic brain injuries. And I remember working in the traumatic brain injury, um, unit at Orlando health in Orlando and, um, you know, the spike in traumatic brain injuries, unfortunately goes up post like tropical storms and, and storms in Florida, because tree trimming is like a very dangerous job. And I can understand how with like houses and things like that, um, keeping safety paramount for people that live in there so that trees don't fall on houses. Um, but I think there's ways that we can do it. Uh, you know, like replanting trees and, and, and doing it, um, with reverence to trees and everything that they, the life force that they are. Um, we cut down trees like we've done in the past couple of years in Hawaii where they just, they're Hawaiian Christmas trees. They're, they're cute. Um, but we go and we cut it down. Like it's like a shave down. And then it's like, you're not taking the roots or any um, of the bottom part. And what I'm getting to is today, our neighbors, um, moved in next door not too long ago. And, um, there's these beautiful, I not Italian pines, but Italian, um, what's looked up with it. They're not Italian pines. They're Italian Cypress, like gorgeous. You know how you think of like Tuscany and you just see, in your head those lined long, like super long driveway with just lined trees. Like, so there were two just gorgeous, gorgeous Italian cypresses that were gosh, how, I don't know, like 30 feet tall and they waved in the breeze. They were so beautiful. Um, they've been here very prominently the whole time we've lived here five and a half years. So I know their lifespan was much longer than that and what they've seen. And anyway, today was like middle of the day and, um, we were all in the living room and we just gotten some packages. I think JD had just changed like a diaper with cord. Um, and we're like, Oh, what's that? Cause like a big truck comes up um, and they start, you know, they go up in the bucket ladder and start like swiftly chop, cutting off the top of these Italian cypress trees. And I'm like, oh, um, I mean, they look super healthy. They're, they're, they're thin trees. So they're not taking up like a ton of space. Um, nor are they like a massive tree, like, uh, an oak or plumeria or anything like that. And, um, I'm like, oh, at first maybe they're just kind of trimming off the top because they are rather tall. Um, but these trees don't even shed, like there's nothing. Uh, and, but then it becomes clear as like, they're just taking off more and more sections of the tree and getting down to the bottom and they do the same on the other tree. And it just like was so, um, such a sobering experience. We, um, obviously it's their house and their choice in their yard, but it was just, uh, um, we, we like, I had to get Kai Kai inside because it's just right on the other side of our fence and like it was falling down onto our side too. Some of the um debris from the tree <laughs> and 
parts of the tree, which is not really like the crux of the story, but um, Camden and Cruz, but Cruz, I didn't see Camden until she told me tonight. So I think hers were more silent. But Cruz was like, mom, I'm so sad for the tree and like climbed it in my lap. And he was crying like real tears, just really raw and sad and like for the animals and like homes that could have been in the tree. Cause we spent a lot of time in our life talking about trees and how they um, give us oxygen and how it's our role, our kuleana, as we say in Hawaii, like our responsibility to care for the earth and be good stewards of what we've been given. Um, and I was just so amazed, proud, humbled um, as I was processing these trees, like being swiftly um, removed um, that they were so impacted, you know, and that in their hearts and in their minds and in their perspectives, they were grieving like the loss of these trees. And they said it even several more times. Cause now like the landscape of our front yard and like the view and how you look when you're so used to something and now it's suddenly gone is real, very different. Um, and they were just like, Oh wow. Those trees gave so much. Like, I wonder how old they were. Cause we talk about trees and, um, like the rings in their life and, um, yeah. So aloha to you. Um, you two Italian, um, cypress trees and we enjoyed you so much. Um, and I hope to continue to be, I think, and believe that humans can, and, sh and, and we, we all have, you know, reasons I'm not saying that it was the wrong decision to, to, for those trees to maybe there's other factors. Um, but just in a more broad worldview that we, we get to, we choose to, we must embrace our role as stewards of this earth, this land and, and every forest and in every part of this huge, you know, globe and corner of creation that we get to call home, um, live in a sustainable way that is honoring of trees and the life force that they are the shade, the air purifiers. Like we, we do all this stuff to like have, you know, it's funny, like in the newer Lorax where they're selling the guy like Aloysius O'Hare, right. He's the man that sells air and it's this whole, um, contradictory profession that he's grown rich off of selling people bottles of air. They look like the big water bottles that people deliver for like office water coolers, but they're just air. Um, and he doesn't want people to know about trephula trees and seeds and real trees because they do it for free. Right. And he, and then he would be out of a job. And so it, in the newer Lorax, like the Wunsler and the old, um, trephula tree fields are outside of Sneedville, the town and the town runs on like, everything is battery powered and, um, and artificial, like artificial grass, artificial trees, artificial everything. Um, and, uh, like the rediscovering and reigniting with the people of like, oh yeah, trees and like how, how beautiful that is. And like from a seed and just the shade and the, the, um, the mad, the majesty of trees, like how beautiful they are to behold. Um, and I also read something recently in my, in a thing like a monk, which is by Jay Shetty. And it's a great book. Um, and he just mentioned a research, uh, study that had been done, or I guess, more than a study, like a project that had been undertaken. I think it's in Arizona, but <clears throat> it's a biosphere that, um, you know, was created with curiosity. And I think it's beautiful that we're curious as humans and we should always cultivate that and follow the lead of children in that way. Um, that's something I'm tapping more and more into my inner child and just playing and dancing with my own children. But so they created this biosphere and it <clears throat> had impeccable, um, landscaping and air temperature and warmth and heat and light elements, um, all the things. Right. Uh, and they couldn't figure out why the trees were falling over when it was felt that they had created an ideal environment inside this biosphere. Um, and then it finally came to light that the trees were not putting down roots in a, in a way that gave them strength and resilience because there was no element of wind and trees, I think are such a great, um, motivator and, um, you know, ambassador of inspiration in the way that they weather pun intended, like the, the adversity in their 
in their tree lives, like, which is the wind, right? So they learn how to um, respond to the wind and the, that factor and that variable that comes through and put roots further down to anchor themselves in the ground and to gain strength and stability. And without that wind, the trees were vulnerable, fragile, and could not withstand um, and just fell. And it's very much like us as humans, like we can choose to embrace instead of speak, instead of suffering, like in my faith and in Christianity, like we're promised, I believe that we're promised hardships and trials um, and adversity in this life. And it's how we um, allow that to transform us, so that there's purpose in our pain and that um, oftentimes the magic that we are seeking is in the work that we're avoiding. That's a quote that came through a divine download of the recent Peloton ride with Robin Artzone. And so, um, yeah, I just, and another cool quote that came last night, or I think recently I heard if you're too, I think I said it last night, if you're too big to serve, then you're too small to lead. And I think trees spend their life serving. They serve as a home for animals. They serve as shade. They serve as air purifiers. Um, and we, we, we do all this thing stuff now, even to like make things smell better. And trees are like, Hey, like they're giving us all the natural, all the things. Um, so anyway, proud moment today with the trees and how Camden and Cruz triaged, pun intended triaged that experience, um, watching from our humble living room window, um, these Italian cypresses saying aloha to them. Um, in a sudden way and how, um, impacted they were by that. Uh, and I hope as a mom to continue to, um, instill empathy, of course, for other humans and people and what factors may go into their decisions and obviously, and, 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 and hold space for respect that people make regarding their own property and homes. Um, but also having that, being grounded and rooted in this immense admiration for these um, green giants and everything that trees do. Like I'm, I'm also mesmerized by these um, three beautiful um, palms that are from Hana, our neighbor across the like kind of cutty corner neighbor. She said that they were from Hana, like. 40, 50 years ago. Anyway, they're just gorgeous. And I can see them from my bedroom window. And I often watch them. I say dancing hula and the trade winds, the breeze, like uh, they're just so graceful and palm trees, um, are truly the most beautiful hula dancers. I feel in nature, the, excuse me, the way that they like allow their fronds to be frayed and splayed open. And as a, re- as a result of the wind and the breeze and the way that they, their trunks and everything, they, they can withstand so much, um, and they don't snap because they're flexible. They bend. Right. And they don't, um, that's also another great analogy for life or rather than like, um, breaking, they, they bend, they get flexible and they adapt. Um, so may I forever, and I will have a, um, deep admiration and respect and reverence for, for trees of all kinds. Um, I truly would be like, love to live in a treehouse one day. And I'm so fascinated by like treehouse builders and all those shows where they create these beautiful works of art in and out of trees. I love all wood, everything like put the wood here and just, I like to see wood floors and, um, just respectful of, of it all. But, um, I just thought that was really cool. And I wanted to make a point to live through that memory that happened today and download it while it was still fresh. Um, so (laughs) aloha trees.